When you walk into a pharmacy or cleaning supply aisle, chances are you'll find bottles of isopropyl alcohol in two common strengths, 70% and 90%. At first glance, you might think the stronger one is automatically better, especially for disinfecting. After all, 90% means more alcohol, right? So shouldn't that mean it's more effective? Surprisingly, that's not always the case. In today's video, we're diving deep into the science and practical uses of 70% versus 90% isopropyl alcohol, helping you understand the difference, when to use each, and why more doesn't always mean better. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is isopropyl alcohol? Also known as isopropanol or rubbing alcohol, this chemical compound is a colorless, flammable liquid with a strong odor. It evaporates quickly and is widely used as a disinfectant, antiseptic solvent, and cleaner. It kills bacteria, fungi, and viruses, making it a go-to for first aid kits and sanitation purposes. However, the effectiveness of isopropyl alcohol largely depends on its concentration. How much alcohol is mixed with water or other ingredients? This is where 70% and 90% solutions come in, and understanding the difference between the two is critical. The percentages on the bottle, whether 70% or 90%, refer to the concentration of pure isopropyl alcohol in the solution, with the rest being water. So, 70% means 70% alcohol and 30% water, while 90% isopropyl alcohol contains only 10% water. It may seem intuitive that the higher percentage is stronger, and while that's technically true in terms of chemical strength, strength isn't the same thing as effectiveness especially when it comes to disinfecting. And that's where a lot of people get confused. Here's the counterintuitive part. 70% isopropyl alcohol is often more effective for disinfecting surfaces and killing microbes than 90%. That's because water plays a critical role in denaturing the proteins of microorganisms. When a disinfectant like isopropyl alcohol penetrates the cell wall of bacteria or viruses, it starts to unravel and destroy the proteins that keep these organisms alive. But if the alcohol evaporates too quickly, like it does in higher concentrations, the process can be incomplete. The cell may become damaged, but not entirely destroyed, meaning some pathogens might survive. With 70% alcohol, the water content slows down evaporation, giving the solution more time to work its way into the cell, denature proteins, and achieve complete microbial death. In other words, water acts as a catalyst that helps the alcohol do its job more thoroughly. Because of the slower evaporation and deeper penetration, 70% isopropyl alcohol is often the preferred choice in hospitals, laboratories, and households for general disinfection. It's effective on a variety of surfaces, metal, plastic, glass, and even skin. It's used to clean medical instruments, wipe down counters, disinfect thermometers, and sanitize your hands. In fact, most hand sanitizers you see are formulated to contain alcohol levels around 60% to 70%, which balances germ-killing effectiveness with safety and skin compatibility. Plus, because it doesn't evaporate too fast, 70% alcohol maintains longer contact with bacteria and viruses, which improves its antimicrobial effectiveness. So when would you want to use 90% isopropyl alcohol? There are still scenarios where a higher concentration is ideal. For instance, 90% isopropyl alcohol is better suited for industrial or electronic cleaning where you want quick evaporation and no water residue. 
It's commonly used to clean circuit boards, electronics, optical lenses, and other sensitive components where moisture could be damaging. It's also favored in some laboratories for cleaning glassware, where rapid drying is essential. Additionally, if you're trying to remove sticky residues like sticker glue or tape gunk, 90% will usually work faster than 70% because of its high solvent power. However, for disinfecting purposes, especially on the skin or household surfaces, 90% is not always your best bet. It's also important to talk about safety and potential drawbacks. First, both 70% and 90% isopropyl alcohol are flammable, so they should always be stored away from heat or open flames. But 90% alcohol evaporates more rapidly, which increases the risk of vapor buildup, especially in poorly ventilated spaces. That can create a fire hazard or even health issues if inhaled in large amounts. On the skin, 90% can also be harsher. It's more likely to cause dryness, irritation, or even chemical burns with prolonged contact. In contrast, 70% is gentler and still incredibly effective, making it safer for regular use on your hands or skin. Both versions of isopropyl alcohol should be stored in tightly sealed containers away from direct sunlight and heat. Over time, alcohol can evaporate, especially if the cap isn't secured properly. This not only reduces effectiveness, but can also increase flammability if vapors accumulate in a small space. Interestingly, because 90% alcohol evaporates faster, it may degrade slightly quicker if stored improperly. So always keep your alcohol in its original bottle with the cap tightly closed and out of reach of children or pets. So what's the final takeaway? While 90% isopropyl alcohol might seem more powerful on paper, 70% is actually more effective when it comes to disinfecting and sanitizing especially when you're dealing with bacteria and viruses. The added water content in 70% helps it penetrate better, act longer, and ultimately kill microbes more completely. On the other hand, 90% alcohol has its place, particularly in electronics, industrial cleaning, and solvent-heavy applications where you need rapid evaporation and minimal moisture. Understanding the science behind these percentages helps you make smarter choices, whether you're cleaning your phone, disinfecting your kitchen, or stocking your first aid kit. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.